Great Ray Longo now joins us. You know, we're living and dying with every strike like you, man, watching from home. Uh, welcome home. Sorry the main event didn't go your way. I thought Marab looked beautiful, but let's start with uh, with the main event. You know, I thought Al started very well, certainly hurt Donald at times. Your overall assessment of, of those epic 25 minutes turned in by those two this weekend. Yeah, no, I think, uh, Kenny, I'm, I'm pretty much in agreement with what, what Kenny said. Uh, and that. Uh, Look, the surprise for me in the fight is that Cerrone's chin held up way better than I thought. Mm-hmm. And any time Al got off and he would try to go again, Cerrone was, you know, good enough to keep him just at bay. And uh, he, he, look, he fought a great fight. Uh, Al certainly had his chances in the fight to do, uh, to get what he wanted. And uh, it was just, uh, you know, again, I, look, as a coach, even to go from the Rob's fight to that fight, your emotions are all over the place. Right. You want to be happy for one guy, and, you know, the other guy didn't do as good. But uh, it's it's all good, man. Just look at those guys on Instagram. I love these guys. That's I know. Why I love them. That's why I love them, man. It's not not just about winning and losing all the time, man. It's about growing and evolving as a person. And, and these are two guys that I, I really... You, you cannot dislike it. Just great guys, and you know, Wow's a fucking class act. And uh, man, is he fucking tough! Holy shit! I mean, I think uh, you know, Bloody Elbow always does that thing. Somebody sent me last night, like when his boost they had out with the winners category, and I couldn't agree more. Man, he just shows what he's made of. He's always puts on an entertaining fight for the fans. He's a home run for the UFC. And I just wish him the best. I wanted to, you know, get his a speedy recovery. He got pretty banged up. But, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, uh, Cerrone was able to, you know, dictate the pace of that fight like a veteran. You know, he slowed that pace down enough to where it favored him. And, you know, I thought I was going to, you know, be able to push through it more and, you know, like get him going backwards more, but it didn't happen. And uh, sometimes it's just not your night. But, man, what an effort he put in. And I think everybody's uh, better for it today. Well, Ray, it, it obviously wasn't because of his toughness. I mean, Ally Aquinta, uh, again, showing why he's one of the toughest guys in the UFC. And what's amazing is, you know, if he does get hurt, he shows nothing on his face. It's like he doesn't yeah. even grind yeah. his teeth or wince or anything. He gets up like, ah, you know, he just slipped. It's, it's not even a big deal to this guy. Nothing phases him. It, it's amazing yeah. every time this guy competes. Um, yeah, the, Ray, the, wait, the wait, focus, wait, the focus sorry, go ahead. concentration this guy has is unbelievable. And Ken, if you know how banged up he was after the fight. I I can't yeah. believe it now what he was doing because I never even knew he was in, in, that bad at all during the fight. So he right. got a, he did a great job with that. Yeah. So Ray, um, you know, Ray, with, he said, go ahead, Ken. Did, sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. Ray. I, I was going to ask you. Did did Al say anything after the fight of what what the issue was? Uh, you know, as far as him not being able to get on the inside uh, against Cerrone. I think, he, look, he got interrupted a lot, you know, with the kicks and the knees, yeah. so Donald did a great job with that, and uh, I think he was, look, he was just a little flat, you know, the, for what we used to see, he never got in that fuck you groove where he's just moving forward and just, you know, in your face, because I think Donald did enough to interrupt him after he took some shots that, um, you know, stopped him from doing so, but I think, uh, you know, like again, I think it was, the, you know, I think he took a knee or something maybe in the first round that maybe disturbed his vision a little bit, but uh, yeah. but that was it. Just he felt a little flat, um, you know. And uh, you know he's going to take it in stride. I mean, he had great spirits that you know we all came flew home together. And like again, the concern I was just want to get him healed up as quick as possible and uh, move on. And if you don't know what Ray Longo was referencing on, on social media, it was Marab and Al. Seemingly having a grand old time. I don't know if the marijuana edibles were flowing, but there are wheelchairs in the airport dicking around having <laughs> the time of their lives. So you know how tough Al is, right? But, you know, sometimes people don't realize just how tough some of these guys are. Like Dominic Cruz has always said to me privately, like, I can take a fucking beating. You have no idea how much damage I can take. And anyone can get knocked out. But one thing, and perhaps my biggest takeaway when it comes to Iaquinta, and sometimes maybe this is just a result of me trying to find a different way to say how tough Al is, but like the last thing he's looking for, Ray, 
is a way out of there, right? Maybe there's a moral victory in going the distance even when you're on the wrong end of the final few rounds, but there was just no way he was getting finished this night, no matter how hurt he was. And it's just a toughness mentally, physically that I that I can't at all relate to. Yeah, no, and I, again, that's well put, and I appreciate it. And, and the other thing is, even as a coach, he's always in that fight, no matter how hurt he is. And I, you know, like, and I think yep. that was, you know, that was the time. I mean, I was trying to motivate him, motivate him to just go and then go again. And even if you're going to get hit, sometimes you know you just got to, you know, keep pushing forward to what you want. You know, so you get what you want. But uh, no, nah, he's not going to quit. Dude, this kid is. I always knew he was tough. This, he took it to another level Saturday night. See, he really did against and, against a guy like like Kenny said. If you look, if you stand and like if you're in no man's land with this guy and you're at the wrong range, that guy is he's brutal. He's a this yeah. guy's huge. He's fucking huge. So which is I didn't think that size would be that much of a factor, but he's a big fucking fifty five of man. Well, and I also think you got Cerrone's best, right? Even though he's 35 right now and someone suggests he's not in his prime. Like, when Kenny Florian fought BJ Penn, that was the, the best shape of BJ Penn's entire professional career, right? In part, oh, because, he that, knew, yeah. in part because he knew Kenny was a legitimate challenger, like Cerrone knew Iaquinta was going to bring him everything he could handle, and he had to take the challenge seriously. But you're getting Donald Cerrone 2.0. You're getting motivated father Cerrone making one yeah. final run at the lightweight belt. And just by nature of the fact that he's cutting down to 156 pounds, he has to work his ass off in training camp. So I think the Joe Schilling relationship is working really well. But, you know, you got to take some solace in the fact that, you know, maybe a guy like Leon Edwards, with all due respect, didn't get Cerrone's best. You almost certainly did, especially over those final 15 minutes. Right, right. No, without a doubt. And I think uh, Joe Schilling's a huge addition to him. I ended up having a couple of drinks with him. What a, another good guy. I you know, love watching the guy fight and uh, glory and... Uh, yeah, I think he, he he made a huge addition. He's a he's a refreshing uh, part of that new uh, entourage at Cerrone's camp. And man, I got to tell you, man, the, the power of the mind is crazy. If that son connection is uh, is working, man, uh, you know, like I think Felder even said somewhere, we really felt like that was going to be the difference. And who's to argue, man? I didn't think it would be, but I think he's got something going on. He looked, he held up. Way better under the pressure than I thought he was gonna. So my hats off to him. It was a great fight, and uh, you know I'm, I'm happy for both guys. And, and to your point, guys, Cerrone mentioned something to the to the fact after the fight. He said, if, "If that was the younger Cerrone, he would have lost. He would have quit out there." And, and it was just a, a, it really was a, a different mentality for Cerrone. Yeah, no, but uh, you know. No, it could be like the George Foreman thing, man. Wait, the guy just gets better as he gets older. Who you know, normally the lightweight guys don't do that, the lighter weight guys, but we'll see what happens, you know. But uh hey before I go to I, I just wanna say one thing because I promised I'd give a couple of shout outs. The people in Ottawa were fucking fantastic, man. What just nice people. But I had one guy in particular, this guy Norman, I just wanna say thank you for everything, buddy. You worked at the hotel, but what a he was a big fan of the podcast. Of the oh, fight. Norman. He went to the fight. Love you, Norman. He, uh, well, I, I can't say enough about what this guy did. Man. He's always giving That's awesome. orders in the room and making sure everything was good. I can't thank you enough. And, and that's and that's everybody in Ottawa, man. It was a fantastic place. It was a great experience. And, uh, the people were uh, unbelievable. Break a tone of man. I spoke to him. What a nice dude. I, he's, I don't know what the, what's in the water up in Canada, but they are just nice <laughs> good people. people. Man. Yeah. So you um, you cross the border and people are talking to you about the Anakin Florian podcast. We just got to get the Americans going. We got the Canadians on board, you know. No, nah, there was a lot. There was a lot of a lot of fans of the podcast, and they really was so. It was so the uh, right. A couple other things uh, before we let you go. I, I, I kind of like when you come back from these shows, your voice is a little bit deeper. You sound great today. Uh, the father thing when it comes to some of these fighters, it really can go both ways, right? Like knowing Ken for the way I knew him as a fighter, like don't even think about procreation while I'm trying to be the greatest fighter in the world. Get your kids the fuck out of here, right? But, you know, like Cub Swanson, I think is 0-4 since he became a father, okay? And... It, there's no doubt it's a huge source of motivation, but and I'm not saying it's softened Cup, but you know I don't think it helped Carlos Condit. I'm not going to get into details, right? But it's not always the biggest.
benefit to a fighter. But Cerrone seems to have channeled it in in a really positive way, and I think the results certainly speak to that. You know. No, yeah. Listen, it's an individual thing, and I'm trying to come up with something, but uh, it, yeah, I, I don't know. But his, it, the way he defines his reality with his son is he's, he's living up to man. That's that's it. That's how he sees it, and I believe he's. It's giving him an edge at this point. I really do. And forth, or even John Jones or uh, Durant, who, who went back and forth. He went back and forth with an analyst, right? That's whatever that guy's in the business. It's a little similar, same thing here. But Durant even went to a guy who had, I don't know, 200 followers, who has like an egg as an avatar. I th- the, the, usually the, the rule of thumb is, is you never punch down. So if... Kevin Durant got criticized by LeBron. You go at LeBron. You go hard at LeBron. You guys can engage because you're on the same playing field. If you can't engage the trolls, you can't engage, you know, those who can't critique. So you do not want to engage with them. That doesn't make sense, man. You get, they, they get fuel and energy off that. I guess with Tony here gives us something to talk about, but at the same time, you know, Tony does have a huge fight coming up. I really think it, but also. Khabib and the, a lot of Ali's guys aren't going to talk shit. So this is why Ali being the manager, he, he kind of does it for him. Mm. You know, people are talking. They get you talking about it. Sure. The, the, what I don't like is, let's say Tony could be, or Tony and Ali saw each other. If they get a physical altercation, that's that's where it crosses the line. It seems like that could happen. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Good chance it happens. And you hit the nail on the head when. Like, it's because Tony's going through all this stuff. I'm just surprised that he would want to do something like that to him now. Especially now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, as as a community, you know, and you're you're in this kind of that that realm. You're in that universe, Ali. Like, when one guy's down, it's it's more than fighting. When a guy's suffering from uh, mental illness and, you know, uh, personal issues, you really don't go after that. That's kind of... You know, it's like baseball. Those are the unspoken rules, man. Yeah. Especially if you're not fighting him. <laughs> and you're a manager. Yeah. Anyhow. Um... If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell. And leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video. And tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.